For the past couple of months, I've been developing a puzzle-oriented sci-fi VR game. By now, we all know that realistic physical approximations can be incredibly fun to play around with in VR, which is why I'm implementing as many of these hands-on puzzle elements as possible. This video focuses on the step-by-step -step creation of another one of the game's physical elements, which is wire physics. So let's get started with the initial idea, which is iteratively connecting individual rigid bodies to their subsequent neighbors. This can be done using Unity's in-house configurable joint system, and, when set up properly, yields a rope-like structure. Speaking of setting up the jointed rigid bodies, the first code I wrote for this project was to automate this process in the editor, allowing me to specify any given length, rigid body radius, and density. So now we've got long chains of rigid bodies, but it doesn't take a PhD to make the observation that these look nothing like wires or ropes. To fix this, a procedural mesh needs to be generated around the rigid body points, and because this is a VR game, that mesh needs to appear to have depth, which omits the much easier option of using 2D trickery. If it didn't take me so long to iron out the wire system's many glitches, I would say that creating the procedural mesh was the most time-consuming part of the project, but no, it's never that easy. Starting simple, the first test implementation of the procedural mesh consisted of a quadrilateral between every two points, so that the quad's vertices aligned with rigid body points that they could adhere to. A big problem I ran into was a result of how I was generating the quads. For every vertice, a second one would be placed along the global y-axis, which worked when the global up-axis was mostly perpendicular to the vector between any given two rigid bodies, but it quickly fell apart at more oblique angles. The solution was surprisingly straightforward. Rather than offsetting the second topmost vertice by a global up-value, I offset it by the local up-axis of the nearest rigid body point. After solving this, the only thing left to do was to make it look more like a wire and less like a long sheet of paper. Adding depth to the flat mesh was a question of how much mesh detail could be left out before the player would start noticing. Fortunately, the answer is quite a lot, with only one additional subdivision being needed to give the illusion of a cylindrical shape. To do this, I added another set of vertices between the top and bottom. This additional set would be offset outwards by the radius of the rope. After mirroring the additional vertices to the opposite side, the process of creating a fully enclosed mesh around the rigid bodies was finally completed. With the actual rope dynamics finished, I could now start to focus on the player's interactions with the rope itself. With this in mind, the most obvious feature that needed to be added was a plug that the player could grab. This was as simple as adding a final iteration to the rope generator that instantiates the plug and attaches it to the last rigid body point. Upon grabbing it, the plug's velocity matches the estimated velocity of the hand, tugging the rest of the rope along with it. This, however, is when new glitchy behavior would appear. When the other end of the rope is also tethered to a static object, the rope physics quickly bugged out if the rope was overextended in any direction. To avoid this, I wrote extra routines to detach the plug from the player's hand and add force towards its tether point if it extends beyond a certain distance. This had the benefit of simulated elasticity while also avoiding a catastrophic overextension. The last element of gameplay integration was allowing the player to physically plug in the wire, which triggers an event depending on whether or not the wire has been plugged in, as is evident in some prototype gameplay examples that are on screen now. I believe a good VR experience should have plenty of entertaining interactive objects to engage the player, and puzzle elements are definitely not an exception. I'm still adding to and refining the game's physical elements, so I have more videos on this topic planned for the future. If you'd like to see those videos too, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.